Hi, I'm Bill McDulty, National Geographic. Um, we are a not-for-profit society with the mission of advancing and diffusing geographic knowledge and uh, inspiring people to care about the planet. So uh, relax here among friends here. Um, this Ignite Spatial is brought to you by these guys, not just me. And I want to personally thank them as I stand here for uh, not only helping with the presentation, but also for the inspiring work they do all the time. And, uh, uh, establishing our tradition of um, uh, connecting geography and information. Um, that goes back to the very beginning of our society. This is volume one, number one of National Geographic magazine. Um, and you can see that um, in one of the first stories we had several good uh, data visualizations and uh, maps in full color. And it was about the great storm of March 11th through 14th, uh, 1888. Um, in World War II, our maps were used by the Allies and uh, forces, and they were also kept in the White House map room um, as a testament to the accuracy and clarity of the maps we produce. Um, and uh, that tradition continues. Um, this Gulf of Mexico map was used by a presidential uh, committee assigned to look at the spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, visualizing large data sets is our specialty. Um, this is a map of rivers throughout the world that involved several different data sets to produce a map that would uh, classify rivers by their discharge as opposed to something else. Um, we've always been into technology. We started using Sci-Tex uh, in 1983 in ArcInfo in 1990. And with those things, we produced uh, the beginnings of our database. It's now grown, and it's uh, eight uh, global cartographic databases. Um, that uh, are not perfect and are constantly being improved, but uh, we use it primarily for anything we can, and it's used to create atlases. We create a lot of atlases. A simple Google search will, uh, will let you know um, the amount of work done by this atlas team um, here and uh, throughout history is, is just phenomenal. Um, interactivity is something that we're getting into, and uh, like this basic thing where you can choose different styles or themes, um, for, for your map is something that, uh, that we're going to try to put in a lot of our products. Uh, it's definitely a core of our um, uh, location-based applications. Uh, we have apps for uh, like the National Park and Traveler that uh, not only allow you to see where you are, but everything from where the wind is blowing to your uh, elevation profile. Um, we also do uh, um, a type of uh, a GOB game app that uh, it, it involves a uh, type of inter interaction that's different than just the regular um, database layers. Um, and our Atlas app is the number one app in, uh, in, the, in Apple's App Store. And this is a sneak preview of the next uh, generation. Um, we're pretty excited about it and it's, uh, it's looking great. We're also getting into um, new type of geo stories where we blend uh, maps, narrative, and media uh, to create richer experiences. And that's called the geo story. And uh, we also are, are venturing into these uh, into new technologies, which we believe are powerful platforms for user-generated content, which is something that we're uh, very excited about here at National Geographic. Um, and uh, an example of that would be FieldScope. Um, where uh, people can uh, lump together all of their data in kind of a community-based or a crowdsourced map. And uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, web-based mapping and analysis tool that people are getting into. Um, we had a great big wake-up call, I think, hopefully, and, uh, and a proof of concept with our search for Genghis Khan, where 10,000 people analyzed over a million satellite images um, to find archaeological evidence of Genghis Khan. And uh, it really, I think, put into focus the power of a uh, membership organization. Um, and it's interesting that the, uh, the people that weighed in, um, our members, actually are going to help the, uh, the algorithm used to automatically detect. And so there's a wonderful kind of feedback loop of technology and, uh, and, and, uh, and crowdsourcing. And uh, Project Know is an exciting project that we uh, are looking at so people can, in their own backyards, use social media and technology to explore the world around them. Um, and as opposed to the common thought of, uh, of our technology being used to isolate people from each other, um, we're trying to use them to uh, allow people to engage more in their surroundings, their communities. And uh, we're excited about that. And that's it. I'd like to thank the sponsors and the, uh, the, uh, um, and the staff and, uh, and 
the people that organized it. Thanks very much.